Introduction of Our Little English Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Francis Brown. Our Little English Cousin by Blanche McManus. Introduction. The lives of our little English cousins are not so widely different from our own in America. It is only the more ancient associations with which they are surrounded that changes their manners and customs. Their speech is the same, and their amusements and tasks are to a great extent quite similar. Certain details of home life vary considerably, and when they take their walks abroad, our little English cousins, as often as not, visit some ancient historic shrine from whose associations have been built up by the great British nation. Little English cousins and little American cousins alike, however, would have the same affections for the same things, were they but to change places. Therefore, things are not so very different after all. What Washington is to America, London is to Britain meaning, in this case, England, Ireland, and Scotland as well, for our little Scotch and Irish cousins by no means like one to talk or write of England alone when one really means Britain. Our little English cousin lives in a less rigorous climate than that which prevails for the most part in America. Their winters are in general not so cold, though they are quite as long, and not usually so bright and sunny. The summers are by no means so hot as ours, and are accordingly most delightful. The open-air pleasures of the English cousins, while existent in our own country, are at least more general than with us, and tea out of doors in the garden or on the banks of the Thames is an institution which is quite unique, and accordingly, as a summer divertisement, is greatly in vogue. The associations which link America and England are many and important. Indeed, they are so numerous that it were futile to attempt to give place to any in this introductory note, beyond recalling to the mind of little American cousins that the great Washington himself was of a well-known English family before they settled in America. Today, if the English are not immigrating to America to the extent that they formerly were, or American cousins are returning the visits, if only for pleasure, edification, in astonishingly growing numbers each year. All this makes for a better understanding and appreciation of each other, and cements the growing friendship of years, which, in our progressive times, is a good thing not to overlook. Our little English cousin, then, extends a cordial hand of welcome, not only to her cousins across the seas, who annually make visits to her native land, but to the stay-at-homes as well, who have that pleasure in store for some future time. End of Introduction Recording by Francis Brown